Fandango. Written by Anna Vita. Illustrated by Misha Archer. Narrated by the Amador family. I'm Rosie Amador and I played Mami and I was also the narrator. I'm Brian Amador, aka Papi, which is also my title here in our family. <laughs> I'm Sonia Amador and I was Lola. I'm Alisa Amador and I'm Sonia's twin in real life and I played Clementina, Lola's older sister. The state of the art studio where Lola was recorded is in our basement. It's the Amador Bilingual Voiceover Studio. Thanks to the advent of modern recording technology, we have everything we need right here. We started doing voiceover work in the late 80s. Yeah, we were musicians, and because we were known publicly, uh, we were approached to do narration. Uh, and so we both read children's stories. And a few years ago, we, we made a decision that this was such a wonderful complementary career to our music. Well, there are certain parallels in our family with the, with the Lola story. Um, I think, you know, in the story, Lola really feels like, a, like her sister, like she's a bit in Clementina's shadow until she discovers her own thing, which is dancing flamenco. And I think, in a way, that's happened a little bit with, with Sonia and Alisa, is that, you know, Sonia, that Alisa picked up a lot of things, especially with music and dance, very quickly, and Sonia finds things in her own way. But when she finds her way to do it, nobody else can do it the way she does. And I think it's been very much that way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, at least when I was younger, a lot of the time I always felt like I was in Alisa's much taller shadow. <laughs> <laughs> she always had all these things that she was good at, and, and then I didn't really feel like I was into anything or good at anything. And then over time I would come and do my own stuff, kind of like Lola with flamenco. Also, another thing that's really similar is that um, Lola and her dad are friends, and they go on walks and stuff like that. And my dad and I, we go on walks. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> when we first read through the script, uh, it reminded me of when we were little little girls, my sister and I, and we both danced flamenco, and we were little, really cute, and little girls with the with the red dresses with polka dots and ruffles and it's just like the story we were just little and we had a lot of duende i think it's real life i mean i i, I feel like so many aspects of this story resonate for us that that it feels quite natural to 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 take it to that extra place where the the uh, author takes us for me, the only inspiration I really needed was the story itself because yeah. it, it's so well written and it so captures the characters that it was very easy to, to make it come to yeah. life. My inspiration for the music for Lola is, uh, is the story and, and flamenco and because of the nature of the story and the rhythm that's, that appears often throughout the story, either clapped out or stamped um, with feet, I... Um, I used a rhythm that's called the uh, alegrias, which is a 12-beat rhythmic pattern that's generally uh, used to express happiness. Alegria means happiness, so it's like... That's, that's the alegrias, and that's, uh, that's kind of the basis of, most of a lot of the music in Lola. The first time that we read through this script, it was so much fun, and it was not difficult at all, and we've all read scripts where we're like, ah, take it again, <laughs> um, but we just read through it naturally and had a blast, and after that I was like, we should do things like this all the time, because it was so <laughs> much fun, and it just the, the way that we all worked off of each other was really great, and we had never gotten to do that before, and it was a great introduction to working all together.